So Scality, you recently carried out a, a data sovereignty survey. I think the uh, respondents were in the US, the UK, France and Germany. And I think that the headline finding is is the good news, if you like, that the vast you, you discovered that the vast majority of companies, organisations do have policies in place, or if they haven't got that, they're at least aware that they need to be starting to, to plan for those. Yeah, absolutely. We, we did find that out in the survey that it was indeed the case that people had already implemented or had plans to implement uh, sovereign storage and really to a striking level. It turns out that nearly all the companies in these countries, France, Germany, UK and US um, have or will have a plan for storing sovereign data. It's 80% already have something in place and 18% plan to implement this in the near future. So that's 98%. Um, we actually found that there were small differences between the countries. It ranged from, you know, 79% or 78% in the U.S. to 82% in the U.K. and everybody else in the middle. So in the end, it means that there's just 2% of respondent, respondents that say they don't have a plan or a regulation or a policy in place for this. Um, but ultimately, it says that data sovereignty is important and it's something on the boardroom agenda. Uh, maybe just to add one more thing, we also looked at industry sectors beneath the countries to see who was driving it. And the one that was the most uh, ready or had already embraced these, these policies were in the business and professional services sectors. They were 85% already in place, so above the 80% average. Okay, and in terms of data sovereignty itself, I mean, I know it's a complex area and the, and the lawyers love to get involved, but in, in simple terms, um, basically countries and or specific industries and regulatory bodies and stuff they are requiring organizations to keep data if you like in specific locations is it this is what we're basically the, the people you were talking to that's that's the issue they have yes yeah that's absolutely right i think ultimately this is overridden by a need for independence right and independence means i don't want to be locked in i don't want to be locked out or i don't want to be subject to change but you're right that the drivers can come from many different practices that are influencing it. I mean, the common example is that there are specific regional and country level rules or regulations. Then there can be industry level ones. I mean, we all know that, you know, the financial services industry in the U.S. has SEC. Uh, the medical industry has HIPAA. And then, of course, there's this over, overriding trend that companies just want security in terms of where their data is, and they don't want to be subject to the forces of a single technology provider or somebody making a decision that's counter counter to that. Okay, and did the survey uncover or, or just anecdotally with talking to your customers, do you get the impression that most companies do understand what's required of them? And you, you said, obviously, there are maybe some specific requirements, but some of it is also they just wish to have control over their data, if you like. Do, do you think companies understand or, or sometimes do you think they might be being overcautious or doing things that they don't aren't required to do, but they have got the impression that they might be required to do. Does it, does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. And I think we agree, right? Our sense is that it's still indeed mainly a very cautious approach. And this is due to many reasons, right? Geopolitical forces, people see things changing, right? But then there's also this industry and ge geographic based competition, right? Certain regions are of course competitive with others. Uh, we have heard that the emerging mindset in European companies, of course, is that they want independence, right? They don't want to be locked into non-European services. But we could also say that the U.S. also looks at uh, foreign technologies from areas like China and doesn't want to be dependent on that. So this independence, I think it's a bigger thing than just data storage, right? You know that in the area of semiconductor and disk drives, we, we see things happening, right, with local investments in regions and countries. Uh, there was the recent CHIPS Act. In that was signed by the U.S. Congress to kind of foster that innovation here back in the U.S. So I agree. This is all in the sense of ensuring that companies are not impacted by competitive forces and that data dependence is the real driver and they're just being really, really cautious. OK, and in terms of the actual practicalities of, of implementing data sovereignty policies, there are clearly a, a range of options available to people and the survey uncovered those and first perhaps you can say I think the public cloud was perhaps the most popular go-to option can you say a little bit about why that makes sense and if there are any potential downsides as well just you know thoughts on on what's good and bad about the public cloud yeah absolutely this this one was 
I think a bit of a surprise to us. We, we found that on average 40% of respondents across all the regions do use a public cloud only. And the word only is key there, right? They're using the public cloud only for data storage where they have these sovereignty related concerns. I think it's surprising, but on the other hand, you find a lot of these hyperscaler clouds do offer regional control. So they'll, for example, say that I have a German data center or a UK data center. Now it's interesting to note that that was just a little bit ahead of hybrid cloud. So hybrid cloud usage came in at 36% across all the regions. And if you think about it, public cloud has been around a while, right? Amazon announced uh, S3 back in 2006. So we're, what are we, 16 years into that. Um, and I think it's also easier to use just the public cloud than it is to use hybrid cloud, right? The technology to keep data in two places isn't yet that, um, that available. Um, you could break it down a bit more though. If you start looking at the countries, there were two camps. Uh, it turns out that the US and the France were way more likely to leverage a public cloud and the UK and Germany leaned a lot more toward a hybrid cloud. So that was a distinct one. Uh, I'll give you an example. French respondents, 52% of them said that they would use a public cloud. And in Germany, it was only 32%. So those two countries alone are 20% apart. And and you you referenced there the, the public clouds, obviously they do offer different regions and stuff, but did, did you get any understanding or again, anecdotally from customers? Are they confident, you know, if, if if a cloud, a public cloud provider says, yes, I'm, you know, where your data is meets what you're, what you want me to do. Are they trusting them when they say that, or do they actually want to look under the covers and be reassured that if they want their data staying in Germany, they know it is, and it's not perhaps, you know, a data center somewhere else in Europe, but they're just being reassured that everything's okay. Just, just thought, you know, what you, what you found maybe. Yeah, that, that to me is the underlying hidden secret, right? Do people, want to get away from public cloud. And I should say that that's one of the things we couldn't capture here. What's the what's the trend of this usage, right? Is it possible that hybrid cloud was near zero a few years ago and now it's growing, right? Was public cloud 70% and now it's 40%. So that's something we'll have to see over time. But I do agree that companies are more comforted by the fact when they see a hyperscaler in their local country, but it's still to some extent opaque. Where is it really being stored? I'm not, I'm not sure that we have, you know, 100% uh, verification of that. And in terms of the, the, the hybrid approach, um, was that pretty much along the lines of anything data they thought was really sort of sensitive and mission critical, they kept very close to them, i.e. On, on, in some kind of pr private cloud, and anything that was deemed to be less sensitive, they were happy to you know, give over to the public cloud provider. Was it that simple or were there more sort of nuances? Yeah, I don't think we were able to get to that level of nuance in the survey. The survey was really about what are you using today or planning to use? And then, you know, do you have a plan in place or do you not? And if so, what is the uh, form of the storage? So, you know, the type of data didn't uh, didn't get explored here. Okay, no, fair enough. And in terms of the other options, I think there were the sort of lesser, lesser number of folks were interested or were using um, regional um, cloud service providers and Again, a small amount, maybe the least amount, were doing just everything still in there. I won't say old fashioned because clearly on premises data centers still have a role to play, but, but a more traditional approach, shall we say, to, to where their data was stored. Yeah, exactly. So again, 40% on average in public cloud, only 36% on average in hybrid. And then the next one down was this idea of regional service, uh, cloud service provider. It was still significant. It was 13% on average across the regions. Now, again, here you have some country level differences. French respondents were way below the average, which actually surprised me. They were 8% would use a regional cloud service provider, but German respondents were at 21%. And we have seen a cottage industry of kind of local sovereign cloud service providers popping up. Um, but again, we need to look at the trend line, right? That's something that we'll do over the years is this kind of a growing area. Uh, back to the question though that you asked, 13% for regional cloud service providers, and then the last category was on-premises only. So distinct from hybrid cloud, those that are just keeping the data locally, that was 11% on average. Uh, but the US was a little bit higher there. They were at 14%. Okay, and do you get involved um, with your customer base? Do, do they ask you for your thoughts and advice on, on how best to go about this? Or do they get, do their own thing and then come to you and say, we need some of this, or can you help us you know, with the actual solution? Or and 
also, I mean, therefore, do you have a view as to what would be the, you know, the optimum? Clearly, everyone's you know, needs are slightly different, but is there likely to be, you know, I, if they're only using one of the solutions you looked at, is that probably yeah. not, not an optimized solution? Just, just, yeah, your thoughts around the, you know, what, what's a, what's a good approach? Yeah, of course. And we've seen this vary a lot over the last years. I should say that back going, I'll flash back to 2015, all of our conversations still at that point were about keeping data on-prem. I don't think many of our customers in our use cases were yet thinking about taking this critical data and putting it in the public cloud. That shifted a lot in the 2016-2017 arena. And I would say that there were even times where we went to some of the big industry events and people were saying, my default now is the public cloud. That's where I'm gonna put my data. Why would I build something on-prem? So you can see that that was a real 180. I think in the intervening years after that, now what we hear is that customers have tried the public cloud. To some extent, they see that it's not a one size fits all. It's also more expensive than it seems. So now we think that there's evidence that people want an, a solution that drives independence through a few things, right? One is not all the data is in one place. It's a great idea to keep things in two places. It does provide some control to keep the data sovereign within some general definition. And then it avoids lock-in from one of these big service providers, right? They don't want to be, you know, always beholden to only the features of Azure or Amazon or Google. So I think the trend that we're seeing and the one that we're advising now is that there's an intelligent and balanced approach that's hybrid, right? Keep the data that you really, really value on-prem and you can send all of it or some of it to a public cloud or regional service provider cloud. Hybrid doesn't always have to involve one of the big, uh, big service providers. Okay, and in terms of, um, I suppose, a, a conclusion, the, mm -hmm. the, as I, we sort of started the conversation, the good news is that virtually all companies you surveyed are you know, doing something around data sovereignty, whether they've actually done it or are planning to, but maybe they still haven't quite understood that it, the, you know, what is an optimum solution looks like. Um, and I know it's a bit of crystal wall gazing, but if, when you do the survey again, would you, would you anticipate, for example, that the hybrid number might have crept up and others down? I mean, moving forwards, where, where do you think folks are, are going to head? Yeah, I think this trend toward hybrid usage seems to be on everybody's minds. It's in a lot of the discussions. But honestly, I think what we're going to do in subsequent years is dig a little bit more into the trends, right? I want to get some clarity on what regulations companies are really aware of that mandate this, right? And then what combination of solutions do they want for certain regions, right? What's better in Europe? What's better in Asia? What's better in the US? And then the emergence of technology, what can be done to make it easier for companies to leverage their optimal policy, right? So I think we do look forward to repeating this and looking at the trends as you talked about, and then spotting changes and also what's the clarity on what's driving this. Okay, and, and the scale, it, you, you see it as a useful opportunity to, to help customers initially clearly if, if you're able to provide them with a you know some technology along the way that's great but, but you are there to give some orders to how to help them address the sovereignty yeah absolutely our, our message that, really has been say? yeah yeah i i think our message is that it's all about data independence and we are that independent choice our solutions are all hybrid cloud ready i should say and that's where we think the opportunity is so that means if you're storing data in one of our solutions, you can actually say, I'd like to keep some of it local on-prem and some of it in public clouds, A, B, C, or D. Okay, so that absolutely we see as an opportunity to keep uh, independent and control and give that to the user. Okay, well, that's great. I think we've, we've most of the, the angles I had. So uh, Paul, thanks very much indeed for your time. Appreciate it, thank you. Thank you very much, Phil, pleasure.